Seashore Trolley Museum visit August 3rd 2022 this video is uh, about my visit to this museum and uh, it is located uh, in the area of Kennebunkport as shown in this map here I will add the information about the uh, website links in the Google description as you approach the grounds there are many different types of rail maintenance vehicles rapid transit vehicles etc that are parked on sidings. This is the main building that greets visitors. Uh, you have a store, you have an instructional area, meeting rooms. Very nice place. Uh, again, more of the various types of rail vehicles that are parked on the sidings. Uh, they even have various uh, transit structures that are saved and brought in here as well for display. They have a wide collection of uh, rail transit vehicles that are like streetcars, interurban, uh, mass transit etc that tries to represent uh, examples from all over the world this is the uh, transit loop at the beginning of the grounds you can ride the streetcar once you get in from one end of the grounds to the other and they both have a loop at each end the open car is very popular with uh, visitors in the summertime you can see many of the different types of uh, streetcars and interurban vehicles uh, stored in various uh, barns that are located throughout the property. This is a chariot car from Montreal. It was used for sightseeing purposes. Uh, this is an interurban car. It shows the various types of seating arrangements. This is a cable car from San Francisco. So again they try to show a good representation of uh, rail-based transit from all over the world. Yeah and also representing a lot of the different manufacturers that were very important and prominent. Uh, I like this particular set of uh, stairs on this street guard that goes almost to the ground level. This is an experimental uh, transit uh, system vehicle. B2 was operated in Ottawa and later on in the city of Cornwall and since I'm from Ottawa I found this one quite interesting to watch. It's been restored to static display. Uh, upcoming here is the restoration barn so they do all this kind of restoration work and maintenance and you have to maintain it, all those vehicles if you want to run them okay very good now, welcome to the seashore trolley museum we are the first and largest trolley museum in the world. We started the preservation of the streetcar movement back in 1939. The roadbed you rode up on, or we rode up on, is the original roadbed of the Atlantic Shoreline Railway. It ran from Kenny Port up to, uh, up to Biddeford. In the late 1920s, they discontinued service on this line, switched over to buses, at that point, they tore up all the track, took away all the ties, brought down all the overhead. And all, all, that, all that was left was the right of way from Penny uh, Bunk Port up, up to Bit of Now, in 1939, a group of college students from Boston came up to Bit of to ride one of the last uh, open cars that ran on that system. And they also wanted to preserve a trolley car for future generations to see what the uh, trolley were, were all about. So in 1939, they purchased that car, moved it to uh, the property here at the front of the property. And of course, shortly after 1939, their uh, progress was halted by World War II, of course. So after the war, the gentleman started putting this railway back together. So remember, 1939, none of the infrastructure was here, just the roadbed. The track was gone, the overhead was gone, the ties were gone. And they started putting things back together in 1939. So it's taken us 80 plus years to get where we are today, largely by volunteer effort. Now we do have paid staff here. But the majority of us here are, are, are volunteers. The gentleman then goes on to describe um, the purpose of streetcars like these open-sided uh, trolleys. 
Uh, they were used on uh, weekends, particularly on a Sunday, to take uh, transit uh, users to uh, amusement parks that were typically owned by the same transit companies. That way, uh, the streetcars could be used uh, seven days a week, and streetcar companies could then generate revenue. stop along the way all these little stations and it's handy too for people who for example want to get off and go to that restoration bar they can get on and get off we'll be checking out the restoration barn in a little while not just streetcars here but you see they have all kinds of uh, mass transit vehicles they also have buses here not just rail I've been coming here since 2000 and I remember when I was first here, some of these vehicles that are stored outside were in much better condition than they are now. Particularly a lot of the buses that are in the back, way over there. I've noticed a lot of them, the past few years, they have their tires and the wheels have sunk into the, into the soft dirt which they're packed on and paint's peeling off and uh, I guess there's only so much you can do with limited funds and limited volunteers, you know, if you... It's nice to get donations of equipment, but if you don't maintain it, then a lot of it, unfortunately, does deteriorate. This here is a nice outdoor display showing different types of trucks. I'm assuming the one here on the right is for PCCs. It looks more compact and more modern than some of the ancient ones here. In fact, what does the sign say here? Oh, actually, I'm 
I have to correct myself. This one here is a modern subway car motor. Number th three is a, is a subway car motor. It's pretty big. Number two is an advanced streetcar motor. That's the one that's made for PCCs. Okay, let's get that straight. And number one is uh, the old rail 27G 1905 era streetcar motor truck. So that's interesting because so you get to compare the size and the complex complexity or the simplicity between the two. And this is like for PCCs, this thing here. Notice actually the emergency brake down there, the magnetic brake. And you may notice trolley wires. That's because they have trolley buses here. Although I don't see any be in being in operation today. So this is interesting here. You see we have uh, the overhead wires for streetcars and then the overhead wire here for a trolley bus. So you notice there's two wires there, single wire for the uh, streetcar, double wires for the trolley bus. Not neat. So not all parts of the grounds were open to the public. Here it says members only beyond this point. Restricted area for your safety. Visitors must be accompanied by museum personnel. Safety first. I'm not sure, but I think what they've done to make ease of operation here, notice there's a regular trolley pole on this mass transit uh, vehicle. That's probably not its original configuration, but I think they probably do that so they can run it on their um, on their system here. So could be wrong, but uh, I think that makes sense. Because that's definitely not a trolley. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be riding that or driving that on a road. It's too high up. Uh, obviously, it's platform loading only. So it's either some sort of former elevated car, some mass transit car in the Boston area. You can tell by the T on the side. And there's another barn here, the Highwood Barn. More streetcars. And here's the buses. I was referencing in an earlier video, I was mentioning that over time, these buses appear to be sinking into <laughs> the ground. Yeah. If you don't move them, see over there, those rear wheels, they're on wood, I guess, to try to float them a bit, a little bit better. Now, I remember this 20 years ago. It was much better condition then. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. See what gravity does over time, huh? And this is... At least it's partial rock here, but oh, look at that, it's sinking in. This older bus here, it's on wood. It, you see, it's... The part of the wheel that's not, or tire's not on the wood is sinking into the stones. Well, this one here seems to be okay, but definitely sinking. Doors are partly open here. Uh, this bus has seen better days. And again, all these buses are all sinking into the ground. I want to emphasize that I'm not criticizing the museum for the condition of these buses. Uh, this is a private museum and in, as the gentleman earlier said, you know, they rely mostly on volunteer labor and they've been in operation since 1939. So it's just uh, a consequence of how 
much time and labor is available from their volunteers and uh, who can do the work. So, And while you're looking at this video and you got some spare money, why not make a donation to this museum so they can uh, put more um, work into these vehicles. They have many different types of buses, many different uh, operators. Uh, that's an interesting bus there. That's one of the first articulated buses. Um, this bus coming up here that says Ottawa Street on it was uh, used by the uh, city of Hamilton for its transit services. So like I said, they have uh, vehicles from all over the world. I've seen um, streetcars from England, from Australia, you know, all over Canada, all over the United States at the museum. It, it's the largest museum in the world for streetcars. Alright, that's the same streetcar but from the front. And obviously we have only rear boarding and exit on this one. I don't see people getting in that front. That's probably just for the operator. So this is a John L. Middleton Jr. Riverside car house. I want to take particular attention to this because there's some cars in here of particular interest. Here's a good example of a PCC car. This uh, PCC car was operated in the city of Washington. That's why it says DC Transit on it. They had an interesting uh, system of getting power where it actually got power underneath the road as opposed to an overhead uh, trolley wire. This is a Washington DC car and this is one of the ones that actually had the uh, below the ground connecting system right there you see so so it didn't have overhead wires to contend with some, a man's working on it right now like I said very nice condition so there's the trucks there emergency brake magnetic brake very nice condition inside Looks like it just came out of off service somewhere. And look at this. City of Ottawa snow sweeper. Number what's the number on it? Number B2. Alright, B2, former OTC car. Not sure, but I think this car also saw service in Cornwall after it left the Ottawa transportation system. And Cornwall didn't um, didn't change anything when they got the Ottawa cars or the cars from anywhere else. They just left them the way they were. So, so this I believe is fully functional. If it was this this is the one that was used in Cornwall, they used it there until 72 and then it came here. So it's you could probably take it out and run it I guess. Maybe have to do some minor maintenance on it, but there you go. That's the OTC B2 snow sweeper. Nice to see a few is still preserved. Big I think these were bamboo, I'm not sure. Feels like it. Si size of those trucks, big. Oh, so this is a single truck system. Snow sweepers on each end. Okay. There's so many different examples of streetcars here. So many different sizes, so many different ways of seating passengers, so many different heights above the, uh, the ground, different ways of e entering and exiting. Clearly this one here, you got the cash box in the middle. So this is a uh, center boarding, center exiting. And you have, I guess, uh, your uh, ticket taker, your conductor here. 
and your operator driver at the front. You see it has a door that closes so the person can operate without any uh, interference. This one's from Cleveland, this particular streetcar here. So, seems like a very elegant way to travel, huh? Nice cho choice of longitudinal bench on one side or forward facing seats on that side. Am I exiting the right side? No, see, we have in and we have out. So I better follow the rules and go out the proper way. Okay. I actually broke the rules by coming in the wrong way. So at least I'll go out the right way. And this is the restoration barn, Seashore Trolley Museum. And this is where you either uh, restore or rebuild a streetcar. Some of them, you, you, as you can see, require extensive ex <laughs> replacement of the original structure. And I guess they try and keep as much as the original so it becomes a restored streetcar as opposed to a replica streetcar. There's one of the dedicated workers down there. So, without this man, this place wouldn't exist. So, okay? Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Do various types of restoration rebuilding, whether it's woodwork or electrical or hard metal or they have a combination of paid staff and volunteers who do this. Some of the cars here are operational. They're in here for service. And uh, I was talking to a nice gentleman here, and he was mentioning that even the uh, all the vehicles have to be maintained on a regular basis in order to keep them, you know, ready for service. So you can't let them sit idle and not uh, do maintenance. So and like this. This project here is a big project, obviously. This getting it right down to the to the bones here of this vehicle. Very impressive building. Very impressive site. Oh, he also. Uh, talking about PCC streetcars and he was mentioning that um, Boston were up here looking for uh, parts for their PCC cars in uh, the Matapan area that uh, I rode two days ago so uh, parts are getting harder and harder to come by but they make but they make do and luckily museums like this are sources of material for a few systems that are operating he says that, uh, gentleman, I didn't get his name. He's one of the people who are paid here, though. He was saying that the, uh, the Boston's PCC system is fairly traditional in its design and scope. Some of the others, like Mooney, for example, had um, much more modern configurations, you know, with wheelchair lifts and electronics and, and so forth. So, one of the one of the reasons too why the Mooney's uh, not the Mooney but the Matapan line is the service he said is actually uh, structural. He said the bridges aren't strong enough to carry heavier cars, so that's another reason to keep the PCCs in operation. So if people are looking for an excuse <laughs> to keep the PCCs running. Well, that that's one of their reasons. So. He said there's talk about. Um, and replacing the PCC with buses and the locals there don't want it. They say, no, we want our, we want to keep our PCCs, you know. They said it's a relatively low income part of Boston and they should still have the same type of rail service that other parts have, so. Okay, so it is 4.12 and this museum closes at 4.30. So I guess I should make my way up to the front. It's a very successful visit again at the Seashore Trolley Museum. August 3rd, 2022. My goodness, it's August already. 
one more thing I'd like to mention is if when you go and visit this museum, you can also arrange to become a motorman. They, they have a motorman program where you can select uh, from a group of available streetcars and you can actually learn to drive the streetcar and you can take it down the loop from one end to the other. At the end, you get a certificate where you become a motorman and you even get your picture taken in front of the streetcar. That's a great way for you to add a little bit of uh, expertise and for a way for this important museum to generate some income.